Bring in RJ Hadavi. He's senior restaurant and retail analyst at Morningstar. And RJ, what do you think? Yeah, I, I think they're pretty strong numbers. I think that the uh, both the global comp number uh, as well as the U.S. number in particular show that some of the competitive fears that we saw in the third quarter uh, have subsided. And I think that we're starting to see some of the benefits from the technology initiatives that Kate just discussed. Um, yeah, I think we'll have to wait for the call. It's going to be a busy one, uh, as, as mentioned. Uh, it's the first time we get to hear Chris Kamchinsky's uh, vision for the company. Uh, but, you know, we may hear some things about new product news. We might hear some things about the dynamic yield. Uh, and, and importantly, too, I think we're going to probably get an update on the capital allocation program, too. I think a lot of investors are looking for what can you expect in terms of dividends and pay, buybacks for this company going forward. But at yeah, first blush, this looked like pretty strong numbers. Do you expect any sort of a, you know, a rapid departure from already the company's <coughs> plans? Do you expect to hear something <laughs> rapid, <laughs> hugely different than what was already in the works? No, I... I no, I really don't think they're going to see anything different, especially since Chris was one of the co-authors with a lot of the technology initiatives. That being said, I do think that he has to put his own spin on his vision for the, for the company. And I think a lot of that's going to come through some of the new technology, the dynamic yield acquisition that I think can really help to redefine the drive-through experience. I think that's where McDonald's and Chris Kaczynski can make his mark right now. So I think we'll see some discussion about that. Uh, I also think new product news. I think this is something that its franchisees have been clamoring for. And so I think you'll hear some discussion about potentially a uh, premium chicken sandwich, potentially plant-based uh, burgers later in the year. Breakfast has been a big area of concern, too, and I know that's an area of focus for this company. So I think that's going to be a focal point when the company discusses uh, earnings later this morning. Hey, Mike, the stock is up a little over 1%. That adds to the gains we've already seen with the Dow, but strong performance yeah, yesterday. I mean, I, and I think absolutely the comps. By the way, also coming after uh, Starbucks had a similar 5 to 6% comps domestically shows you uh, this sort of disposable income story is good. McDonald's stock still working below the highs from the summer, which was really in that big rush into defensive seeming mm -hmm. stock. So, it is, so right now it's trading based on these results. The core business looks like it's doing well with a slight currency headwind. What did you think of yesterday's action? for the major indices? Uh, it, was, it was obviously encouraging, but also kind of just got you back up to neutral. As a typical Tuesday, you get a little bit of a rebound after two selling days. Um, but I do think that, you know, the, the, lead, the old leaders reasserted themselves. The big Nasdaq stocks did very well. And Apple. then the Treasury bond, you know, yield going up a little bit, let yep. the banks rise. So everything worked together, but it, it wasn't enough to say, oh, it was just a little two-and-a-half pullback and, and we're today, done. Today, no, and I'm wondering yeah. whether the... You know, we're in a market where dip buying has is, is been yeah. working for how long? This time, after Davos, and the, the indicator was way too bullish, right. I figured maybe we're the topping. And, and then immediately the coronavirus, you know, got worse, sure. or the whole situation got worse right after a positive Davos. And I'm thinking maybe this is topping. But it, I don't know about toppy. I do think, look, if, if we came into, if we came through Davos, and all the indicators were that people were very aggressively positioned and a little bit too bullish, and sentiment was at a two-year high, and valuations at a couple-year high. Is a two and a half percent back back off Mike, in a week enough to skim that away? I don't know. Maybe can I ask you what, this environment? I'll tell you something that, that, that I was also thinking about, and that is just the volatility in the VIX. Possible World War Three. All right, we got through that. With Iran, possible pandemic, uh, maybe, maybe not. Uh, impeachment, you know, maybe yeah. we remove this gap. I, I mean, zero volatility. Is that the Fed, or is it Apple, and that things really are good, it's, and the consumer? It's it's all that stuff. It but is. I think it's mostly the fact that if the market is not detecting real weakness in terms of a recession, you know, on the on the horizon. Consumer credit remains great. Absolute level of yield hey, remains great. So World War III and a pandemic, but the consumer's really fine. And, uh, I, this doesn't make any sense. What did the market do through the Cold War? I mean, we were on the brink, okay. right? I mean, Constantly. You're right. Hey, RJ, what, uh, what else do you want to hear on the call today, aside from the new products, aside from what they do with cash and dividends? Um, you're really, the, the coronavirus, I guess, is the, the last point I'm eager to hear about. Uh, China represents about 8 or 9 percent of the, uh, the, the company's units right now, so it does have exposure there. Obviously, it's lessened by the uh, franchisee partner that they have. But I really want to understand what's going on there and what kind of expectations we can have for not only McDonald's, but the broader restaurant industry. Mm -hmm. uh, this is something that obviously will probably weigh on results, probably uh, at least for companies like Starbucks, we're seeing you know, negative comps probably in the second quarter and possibly into the third quarter. I think that's going to be uh, help to set the tone internationally. So I want to hear a little bit more about what they're seeing. Uh, what kind of impact and what kind of expectations we can be looking at uh, in China, because that's an important market for them. For, for McDonald's, you said it's 8% of the revenue, China? It's about 9% of the, uh, the overall uh, units for the company, and uh, you know, right around 10% uh, you know, of the revenue. 
And in terms of Starbucks, what's the percentage there? It's about the same. It's about 10 percent, a little bit higher in terms of the operating profits for the company. Uh, but the company talked that it's going to have a material impact not only on second quarter results but full year. Um, you know, it, depending on the severity, it all depends on how long the stores are closed. But Starbucks talked about half of its locations in China, so about 2,200 locations are closed right now. If we continue to see that over the next week or two, if they're closed for the next week or two, that's probably putting them in uh, low uh, double-digit negative comps for the second quarter. I think that'll bleed through the third quarter. Probably puts the international segment at a low single-digit decline for the year there. So that's uh, something you got to keep an eye on right now. But it's usually going to be short-term. This isn't something that's company-specific. Can open up a lot of buying opportunities if the market gets spooked by the uh, coronavirus impact.